In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 8, Section 4, Calculator Permitted, Questions 27 and 28. So we're getting toward the end of the problem solving. Question 30 is when it ends before the grid inserts. So we know these are going to be more difficult problems. All right, let's take a look at question number 27. In the xy plane, the point PR lies on the line with equation y equals x plus b, where b is a constant. The point with coordinates t 2p5r lies on the line with equation y equals 2x plus b. If p does not equal 0, what is r? over p. So we've seen this before. We're given a point. Now this is not a point with the, an actual number like 2, 6, but nothing changes. Anytime you have a point that lies on a line, you can substitute that point, that coordinate point, it'll satisfy the equation. And so here's the equation. So for this first one, I'm just going to plug in PR. So R, I'm going to plug in for Y equals X. We're going to plug in P plus B. That's the first equation. Second one, here's the, here's the coordinate point, 2P5R. I'm going to plug in this equation. So our, our Y is 5R. 2X, X is 2P, so 2 times 2P is 4P plus B. Now we want to get R over P, and if you notice we've got R, P, and B. We're told B is a constant, so how do we do this? We want to get rid of the Bs. What we can do is set both of these equal in turn with b equals we can isolate and then plug in the r and the p so let me explain so here's our b i'm going to solve it for b isolate b so b equals r minus p all right here solve for b i'm going to subtract a 4p i get 5r minus 4p okay now they're both equal to b I'm going to set these equal and the B's are going to cancel out. We've seen this before again, but this is how we eliminate the B's and we only are dealing with R and P. So I set both of these equal. I get R minus P equals 5R minus 4P. Now when you have variables like this and we're asked to find R over P, you want to get them on either side. So I'm going to add a 4P to both sides. I'm going to get 3P equals I am going to subtract an R from both sides for R. We're almost done. There's a couple ways to do it. We want R over P. One way of doing this is when you have this coefficient like this on either side. I think some students look at this and make the mistake and they think it's 4 over 3. But that's basically saying 4 times 4 equals 3 times 3. It doesn't make any sense. So if you want a good technique sort of shortcut is you flip the coefficient. And so we want R so we're going to take the coefficient from this side and plug it in for r. That's going to be 3. And then for this p, we're going to take this coefficient. The answer is 3 over 4. And if you can check this, we know that 3 times 4 equals 4 times 3. All right, if that doesn't make sense, I'm going to give you one more sort of academic way to do this. If you have 3p equals 4r, again, we're trying to find r over p. How do we find r over p? Well, what we can do is divide both sides, in this case, by 4p, by 4p, because then we get r over p, which we're looking for. Here, the p's cancel out, and we get 3, 4. So either way, we get 3, 4. It took a lot of time, though, and that's why you have to be, I think, be recognize these concepts and work efficiently. All right, we'll do the last question on this page. It's number 28. The 22 students in a health class conduct an experiment in which they each recorded their pulse rates in beats per minute before and after completing a light exercise routine. The dot plots below display the results. So we have beats per minute before the exercise, beats per minute after. And let's take a look at the question. Let S1 and R1 be the standard deviation and range respectively in that order of the data before the exercise and S2 and R2 be the standard deviation range respectively of the data after, which the following is true. So S1 is the standard deviation, R1 is the range before, and then we have S2 and R2 after. And you'll never have to figure out standard deviation on any problem on the test, but you should understand what it means. Standard deviation, if you have a group of observations like we do here, the, the more they're clustered around the mean, the lower the standard deviation. So just by looking at this, you see how you've got really the bulk of the observations here, the beats per minute before the exercise, and there's just a couple outliers. But here you see how they're really much more evenly distributed. This one is going to have a greater standard deviation because it's the observations are farther from the mean. So just keep that in mind. And so if, if you start with standard deviation, 
we know that it can't be equal, right? And here it's saying the standard deviation is less than one than two. That, that looks good. It's definitely not greater, right? The standard deviation is not great. It's, it's smaller than one because they're more clustered. And here it says they're not equal. Okay, so we're really down to two. Then the range. Now, if you look at the range, this one is from 56 to 88. So this one has a range of 22. This one's from 80 to 112. That's also 22. I would probably would have start with the range. I mean, we know the range is equal. Even though they're, they're starting at different values, the range is still 22. We know that the range is equal and it's got to be D, right? The range is 22 in both. The standard deviation is not equal. And so, and the answer here is D.